Resurrection Sunday, which is also known as Easter Sunday, is a very significant Sunday all over the world because without resurrection, there will be no church. Without Easter, we won't be here where we are today. So this mark a very special season for the church, for the Christian all over the We are going to read from the book of Matthew chapter number 28, from verse number 1 to 8. Matthew chapter number 28, verse number 1 to 8. And just to give you the account of what has been happening before we get to Matthew 28. The whole thing about Easter, we see it starting from last Sunday, what is called Palm Sunday. And Palm Sunday is when our Lord Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem, what we call the triumph entry to Jerusalem. And when he entered there, that was the last week of him in this world. He was going there for celebration and the Bible says that he rode on a donkey and the children and people sang Hosanna to him. And so the week started where we see from Monday, there are so many activities that was happening in the Holy Week. Where Jesus went to the temple and he was even overturning the table where the people were doing shopping and they were doing business in the house of God. And so it went on until that day when we had what we call the Lord's Supper, which was the, the last supper when he ate with his disciples. And you follow me somebody. So on that day when they ate the supper, he was already talking about that one of you will betray me. And of course we know Judas Iscariot was one of them that was saying, is it me? And we know that in his mind he had already made a deal. So he knew that it was just a matter of time. And now we come to Friday. Friday, now before the crucifixion, is when we find Jesus at the Gethsemane where he was praying and seeking God. And he was honestly praying. The Bible talks about that he's sweating and he was sweating blood because of the kind of prayer that he was making. And now on that Friday, that is where now they were getting ready to come and crucify him. And on Friday when we came here, we talked about the crucifixion and what happened on the crucifixion. And one of the elders talked about the one of the words that was spoken because there are seven last words that Jesus talked on that cross before he left. And this is a word, I'm going to repeat those words for you so that I can just give you the account. The seven words that Jesus spoke, the first one was, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. The second word was, today thou shalt be with me in the paradise. The third one was, woman, behold thy son. The other one was, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then Jesus said, I am thirsty. Then there's another one that says, it is finished. And finally he said, Father, into thy heart I command my spirit. And so that was the last seven words that was spoken by our Savior when they were crucifying him because of my sin and the sin. And you see, the Bible says that before they, before they crucified him, when he prayed, he was ready to empty the cup. He was ready, the cup was too much for him. That he went and he said, Father, may you remove this cup from me, the cup of suffering, the cup of pain, the cup that was full of emotions. But he said, it's not by my will, but let thy will be done. And what was the will of the Father? The will of the Father was for our Savior to empty the cup. God could have come and rescued his son from that cross and take him out. God could have sent his angels to come and rescue him, but his mission was to come and empty the cup, and he emptied the cup for him. For, for him. Praise the Lord. And so that was Friday. Then we come now to Saturday. The Saturday was a quiet day. It was just a very quiet Saturday, sorrowful, because there was a lot of mixed reaction because people did not know what was happening with the celebration that was going on on the Passover. And now the church and families, they knew what had already happened. That Saturday was a very quiet Saturday. But let me tell you, church, three days after, a lot can happen in three days. 
Amen. Three days after Friday, there was Saturday, but there was what we call the early Sunday morning. Praise the Lord. It was on three days. There's a lot that can happen in three days. And you may ask, Pastor, why three days? And three days is also very significant in the church. Because Jesus was raised in those three days. Amen. Three days in the Bible talks about is associated with a feeling of hope and being optimistic. Three days. Amen. Three days, number three, is the number of Trinity. That's why you find there's God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three days is associated with our Father. That's why you find that when we define the nature of God, He is described in three generations. He is God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Praise the Lord. Three days in the Bible. In, 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 in Hebrew is what we call Shalom. And it means harmony. It means a new life or completeness. And number three appears 467 times in the Bible. So there was a reason, there was significant for him to go to the grave and three days come out. Praise the Lord. You got to remember that our friend Abraham, who is the father of faith, when he went to sacrifice his son Isaac, the Bible says that he took a journey of three days. And after three days, the Lord provided the lamp of sacrifice. So this is a lot that can happen in three days. And I don't know what you have gone through. I don't know what are the situation in your life. But let me tell you, when we celebrate this is the Sabbath, there is a lot that can happen in three days. Hallelujah. Somebody give God glory and say three days. Hallelujah. It was not just a coincidence that when, the, when the Jesus was born, that we find that he was brought for three gifts. Amen. They could have brought four, but it's a reason why they brought three gifts. Praise the Lord. So there's a lot in the Bible, and even Jesus himself, when he was talking to his friend Peter, and he was talking about feeding the frog, he told him three times, praise the Lord. There must be a reason why number three is so significant. Amen. Amen. And don't forget that our prophet Samuel, when he was called as a young boy, he was called three times. Amen. He was called three times. And then finally he was told, he said, when, you call, when he calls you, say, here I am, I answer death. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And also in heaven, you got to realize the, the heavenly host, they sing the song of everlasting song where they sing holy, holy, holy three times. Praise the Lord. So they saw Jesus, who there was a sacred, there's a power that was lying behind him from Friday. And then we go to Saturday, and on the third day, early in the morning, he was found not in the grave anymore. 